Yo, what is up guys, it's Pedro here. In today's video, I'll be talking about why I think the Washington Commanders offense can be special and I'll show you guys why. Also, if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. Do all that good stuff. It really does help out the channel a ton. Check out NFL all day and make sure you guys stay tuned for the entire video because I will be showing some really, really cool stats about Jaden Daniels and also about this offense and comment down below who you have been most impressed with so far this season on offense and bear with me this is the third time I've recorded this video because the file has gone corrupted so yeah bear with me and hit that like button but let's get right into it the Washington Commanders offense has been pretty impressive so far through two games and maybe the points don't show that and we'll be going over why uh, you know some things that they need to fix to really become a special offense uh, but in terms of efficiency they're right there with some of the best offenses in all of football uh, you see this graph right here uh, you look at defensive EPA per play which is you know the uh, vertical uh, axis and then the horizontal axis is the offense the commanders are right there top five right there which is great to see great to see uh, and this is through two weeks, I believe. It says week, yeah, week two NFL tiers. This is through two weeks, and they're up there with the Bucks, who have had two solid games. They're two and zero. The Cardinals, who are one and one, or one and one, who lost to a two and zero Bills team, and then the Saints, who are also two and zero, two and zero. So the you know Commanders are up there. It's just they haven't scored the points like these other teams have. The Bucks have the Cardinals, 30, two 30 plus point games. The Bills, I believe, the same thing and the Saints to 40 plus games. The Commanders just haven't been in that same tier of scoring points. But in terms of efficiency, they've been right there. Uh, uh, you know, they lead the league in offensive drives with a first down with 74% there, 6% with touchdowns. Uh, you go, what, seven, is that seven field goal? No, sorry, that's 15 field goal and six punts. So the first downs are there touchdowns aren't you know 100% there uh, but they're up there with a lot of the offense with a lot of their really good offenses so um, and it just says yeah series that end with half ending included in field goal series series that end in kneels down excludes so kneels kneel downs don't count uh, which is a good thing yeah but they don't count because that would make the results a little bit uh, off and then here is a stat shout out to Mason here for these great stats the commander are second and 10 plus yard runs that is not happening with Scott Turner and Eric Bieniemy. third in total rush EPA which is just efficiency uh, stat third in rushing yards over expected which basically in simple terms let's say Brian Robinson was expected to get four yards on a carry and after those four yards he makes a guy miss runs over someone and gets eight more yards that's eight yards over expected uh they're third in yards before contact fourth in epa per rush fourth in i don't know what that is my guess was run yards over expected but they already got that six in yards per game and six in yards per play and mason says give clicks uh cliff kingsbury and anthony lynn their flowers and i agree they've done a very solid job so far just got to be better in the red zone and that is partly the scheme things need to be better partly Jaden daniels uh making the correct reads which sometimes he's missed like terry was open for a touchdown last game i looked at the i saw a clip about that uh and then also the biggest thing in the giants game was penalties i mean you can't have penalties anywhere really a lot of the times but especially in the red zone false start after false start after false start after false start i believe they had four false starts uh ben sinnott had one on fourth and one which they're gonna go for and i think they were gonna get based off how brian robinson ran that day on sunday and they didn't they had to kick a field goal uh sam cosme had one or two nick allegretti had one there was probably someone else who had one it just cannot happen it cannot happen it's not good for your offense and especially in the red zone, it's already hard to score in the red zone. You can't make it harder by moving yourself back five yards. And instead of a whatever first and goal from the five, you're backed up five yards. And that just 
No, first and goal from the 10 is very different. They know you're probably gonna have to pass, and if you don't complete it on second down, you're definitely gonna have to pass. Versus on you know first and goal from the six, let's say you run it to the three yard line with Brian Robinson, you can either run it again, or you can do a little play action or whatever you wanna do and pass it. They don't know what you're gonna do. And that's a huge advantage of uh, starting within the five or six yard line and not having penalties, which they have had. And that is something that they need to get better on. And that's on the coaching for the most part. But sometimes the players just got to be better. You got to know the offense a little bit better than that. And you can't be, uh, you can't be, yeah, committing those penalties. Also, time, not time management, but like this might be on Jaden, but they got to be better at like not wasting timeouts early, like getting in and out of the huddle quicker, calling the play out a little bit quicker because they have had a couple of times where they just called timeouts went really, really early in the game so that's something that i do think they need to work on uh but i think it's been very encouraging so far the running backs have been good the tight ends have been pretty good or at least zach Ertz has offensive line has been better than expected Jaden daniels has been really solid best rookie not even close in terms of quarterbacks right now and he's not even in the best situation uh but real quick a word from today's sponsor nfl all day Hey, have you heard about NFL All Day? It's this really cool way to collect and own official NFL highlights. You get to collect some of the biggest plays in football, and now they've even added the top rookies from this year's draft, including Commander's starting quarterback, Jaden Daniels. Basically, you buy packs that contain moments, like a big touchdown or a game-changing interception, and each one is unique. They're all tied to the blockchain, so it's like owning a piece of NFL history that's totally yours. Plus, with the new rookie class just added, you could pull a moment from one of the league's rising stars right from the start. What's awesome is you can either hold on to them or trade and sell with other collectors. Some of the rare moments, especially those from breakout rookies, are exclusive, so it's about collecting what you love. It's also a fun way to stay connected to the future of the sport and there are always new challenges and events where you can earn even more moments it really feels like being part of the nfl community seriously now's the perfect time to jump in grab a pack see what you pull you might land a moment from one of the new rookies or even an iconic play from a superstar it's a fun way to be a part of the game and build your collection i opened a few packs and was able to pull Brian Mitchell and LeVar Arrington, as you saw, and you guys can see those moments. It was really cool, and also got Terry McLaurin and Brian Robinson moments as well, so I highly recommend you guys checking NFL All Day out. All right, and again, a huge shout out to NFL All Day. Let's get back into the video, and also shout out to Mason, who has been putting out a bunch of really good tweets with these uh, cool stats. Let's go to the Jaden Daniels stats that you guys want to look at pass rating he's eighth in pass rating which is an indicator it's not the best indicator it's not the only indicator but it is an indicator he's up there with a lot of good names for the most part uh you know Derek Carr has had a good year Baker Josh Allen Kyler Darnold's has a solid year CJ Stroud Geno Smith Brock Purdy and Joe Burrow who they are playing this week completion percentage another indicator not the indicator again all these there's not the like one indicator there's some indicators that are better than others his completion percentage 75.5 percent very good number three in all of football and it really does vary offense by offense some offenses are more dink and dunk which kind of has been us so far and some offenses are more throwing down the field like you know anthony richardson and the colts from what i've seen but you look at the broncos they're very dink and dunk and throw short passes and Bo Nix isn't on this list, so still good to see Jaden Daniels on this list for sure, and nothing against Bo Nix. He might end up being good, but you know, Jaden Daniels right now is just a little bit better, probably a lot better, but uh, you know, it's still early for a lot of these rookies to crown them or to say they're a bust, uh, but Jaden has looked good so far. You look at rushing yards, he's number two right behind Lamar Jackson, and then you got uh, rushing touchdowns. He's got two, which is first, tied for first with josh allen he also has zero interceptions which is tied for first and then also doesn't have any touchdowns which is tied for last or maybe no actually yeah no there's a few quarterbacks that don't have any touchdowns Uh, but he does have two rushing touchdowns so that does make up for a little bit and definitely no interceptions makes up for it for sure uh there was another stat i did want to look at real quick 
uh, I guess it's on here. It was not a stat, but and shout out to uh, Austin Cyber who did win Offensive Rookie of the or not Offensive Rookie uh, Special Teams Player of the Week. He got another stat with Jaden Daniels, only first round quarterback with 500 total yards and zero giveaways through two starts in or through two career starts since 1970. Shout out to Jaden Daniels. Got that aura to him as well. See any other stats I didn't go over? Yes, you got Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson. Very, very efficient. Brian Robinson uh, and Eckler are about the same as tackles force per touch, which they're probably top 10 in ish. You got JK, Devin Singletary, and some other guys in front of him, in front of them. But in terms of yards from scrimmage per touch, which is a testament to them, but also the play callers. Eckler is second behind uh, J.K. Dobbins, and then Brian Robinson's right there with Kamara. The reason Eckler's ahead of him is be, or ahead of Robinson's because Eckler's more of a pass catching back, and when you're catching passes in space, you get a lot more opportunities for yards versus running up the middle with a bunch of uh, big offensive linemen and defensive linemen in your way. Uh, even though the offensive linemen obviously are trying to help you out. Uh, but it is good to see this right here, and it shows this offense does have a lot of potential. I think Jaden Daniels' legs is a huge reason why this offense has potential and also why these guys are you know, very efficient because they got to be paying attention to Jaden Daniels too, not just the running backs. Uh, here's another stat. The Commanders are top four in 2024 true pass set grade. Take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if they're top four, but... I uh, just wanted to show you guys this real quick. Uh, I think, yeah, the offensive line definitely has been better than I thought they would be, and they haven't been terrible. Jaden's also made them look a little bit better, evading the sacks and stuff. Uh, but, yeah, these playmakers also, like Zach Ertz has been good. And Noah Brown, he didn't play week one, played week two, had a good week, three catches, 56 yards, I believe. He's going to continue to get more and more acclimated to offense and more targets, which is going to make this offense better. And uh, same thing with like some rookies like Luke McCaffrey, Ben Sinnott, Brandon Coleman. Hopefully those all those guys will get better and better as the season goes on. And maybe one or two of those will be big contributors this year. And then I think Terry, they're going to get him involved. Uh, they missed him in week one, or Jaden did, on that 70-yard touchdown pass. And then also he was open one time for a touchdown. Don't know if I repeated that. I've made this video three times. So uh, if I did, sorry about that. Yeah, Jaden's been good, and I think he's going to continue to get better and better each week. You know, there might be some bad weeks, but for the most part, I think he's going to get better and better every week, which is going to help this offense get better and better. And when you have an elite quarterback, your offense has a chance to be special. I'm not saying Jaden's elite yet, but I think he has a chance to be. And at the end of the season, we could be having a very explosive offense if he continues to ball out and some of these playmakers uh, step up a little bit and they can actually produce in the red zone, then I think this offense will be in a very, very good spot heading into those uh, last few games this season. They play the Bengals. I think Jaden's going to be able to put up some points. I think they're going to lose. I think also my bold, not bold prediction, but Jaden throws his first touchdown and interception of the season. I think he'll go like two touchdowns, one interception. My early prediction is like a 31 to 24 type of game, maybe 31 to 27, something like that. I think the Bengals will win. It's just our secondary is just not good at all. And uh, they've got, you know, Jamar Chase. We'll see if T. Higgins plays, but they've just got good receivers and a good quarterback. And it's going to make it really tough for our cornerbacks, whoever is out there. Uh, it's just going to make it really tough for them. But yeah, this offense, I'm excited about it. And it really comes down to how Jaden Daniels develops. One thing I, I said in the other videos, I would like them to rush, run him up the middle far less than what they're doing. I don't like it. It gets, hit. first of all, it's been very inefficient. They get like two, three yards every play. Second of all, he's running through your own offensive lineman. Like he's getting thrown in there with five 300 plus pound guys, plus the defensive linemen who are trying to hit him, plus the linebackers who are all, you know, the D linemen are all, you know, around 300 pounds and the linebackers are super strong. Like, I don't like that. Also doesn't have the sideline. Go ahead, run outside if you're going to do that on a designed run. And he has a sideline. Also, it's more boundary players like cornerbacks and, you know, maybe safeties. So if they do hit you, it's usually less of a big hit than a guy like, uh, 
you know, Chris Jones or Dexter Lawrence we played last week. You don't want Dexter Lawrence hitting Jaden Daniels. You just don't want that to happen. And you hope Jaden, when you do run outside, he's able to get down a little bit quicker than he does or get out of bounds. But yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy. Check out NFL all day and comment down below Laron Landry if you stayed till the end. Someone went ahead and suggested that last video. Shout out to you, whoever you are, and peace.